So uh, hiring ethicists is one example of it. Another example I, I will share with you. Recently, I was speaking as a guest lecturer uh, at the University of Denver School of Management. This is a school of management. We are uh, training people who will become managers. Uh, the uh, invention and maturation of the AI system uh, will have an impact on nearly all aspects uh, of our work. Um, to, uh, there's a professor uh, at Stanford University who says that the um, humanity's discovery and invention of AI is analogous to uh, the invention of electricity. Uh, think about how we lived in the 17th and 18th centuries uh, before electricity came up. Uh, is that uh, everything we had, of course, life still went on, human society still continued, ethical questions we still existed, justice and injustice still existed, but um, the tools that we had was limited. Now, with the invention of electricity, not only lighting, but then electric motor, uh, and now uh, um, electric cars, and then add AI to that with um, partially self-driving. We don't have a complete self-driving yet, but there are five levels of that. We are talking about L3 and L4, um, which is driver assist. Um, so technologies will advance, no doubt about it, right? But the question is this, how, you asked me, uh, how can the governments and companies exercise moderation? In order to exercise moderation, you have to think about what is the effect of this technology in the society. If AI is going to impact nearly every, every job, nearly every work, sometimes we um, say probably the hairdresser that actually takes a scissor to your hair is probably the least person impacted, except in the booking and the payment and so forth, <laughs> um, other business. Uh, but, but many other things, accountants, lawyers, engineers, of course, scientists, um, uh, uh, the people who work in the healthcare system, uh, ne ne nearly every profession will be affected by AI. Okay, very good. Now that we have that, then the question is, this is an opportunity for us to create a society that is less oppressive, that is more fair, more just than the society we had in the 20th century. And uh, the example of that would be um, uh, well, there, there, are, there are numerous examples. I won't waste time going through the, the, those examples, but there are numerous examples uh, of that. Uh, that that can say that you can uh, um, practice, can exercise moderation by thinking about the effect of the technology on the society. What does that mean? That means that the engineers should not necessarily be uh, studying math and physics and computing and programming and algorithms. In addition to that, they should learn about cooperation. They should mm -hmm. learn about, um, understand the twin processes of integration and disintegration in the, in, in the world. Understand that, there, that, that these two integration and disintegration processes uh, both exist simultaneously. Uh, the forces of, uh, forces of disintegration break up societies, break up families, break up um, communities up, uh, 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 de destroy the governments and things like that. Uh, and then uh, forces of integration are people of goodwill, uh, people who work for maybe NGOs, uh, maybe those who come together to uh, advance the betterment of mankind. That force is also increasing. So once we understand both of those, we go back and we say, if you are uh, teaching people who will be managers of upcoming startups and companies, professional managers with MBA degrees that then go out and manage these companies, you should include in their education, not only law and accounting and decision-making and technology and so forth, but also value systems, human value systems. So that's important for, for the universities to include that in their curricula. 